nam mô sakamuni buddha so today we continue to uh, study about the uh, four nubutu eightfold paths uh, the reconcentration in the reconcentration we study about the four sublime states and uh, last time we discussed about the sublime state of um, loving kindness that uh, we have the wish that um, uh, everyone uh, are free from sufferings and so forth and uh, today uh, we continue to discuss about the compassion uh, compassion in the means that um, we uh, take action that uh, when we see uh, other people are suffering, uh, we would um, step in and help them out. So um, uh, let me uh, share with you the screen. Um, and here, that's the, the definition of uh, um, compassion in Sanskrit word is called karuna. Uh, so may you find healing, may you be free from sorrow, uh, may you find peace. So this compassion, uh, which uh, uh, encourages us to step out uh, to help others to be free from uh, physical, mental, and even spiritual sufferings. Yeah. So um, in this comparison, it has what we call empathy. Uh, we care enough not to turn our gaze uh, our back away from sufferings of others. And the second one is the impulse to have a village uh, that suffering. That's mean um, uh, we care for um, the one I suffering now. And we have the courage uh, and um, willing to uh, step out to help others. Like uh, even the Buddha, uh, he is a teacher, uh, but still, because of his compassion, he took care of a sick monks uh, to set up the uh, example. Uh, for us to follow. So in this compassion uh, meditations, uh, we direct our mind to three types uh, of people uh, with one type of thought. Uh, so um, the first one is a person we respect, like our teachers, um, our parents, uh, our elders, and so forth. Uh, the second one is an indifference person. That mean the one that we don't know them uh, or the stranger. And the last one is the uh, person that we may not like or we may have uh, animosity toward them. So we need to uh, uh, have the thought of uh, may this good person uh, be released from sufferings. We have that wish. You know, so we need to engage in our activities uh, to uh, reduce the suffering of those people. Uh, like here, we see the image of uh, the children in Africa uh, that they suffer because of the uh, uh, hungriness. Um, um, mouth uh, nutritions. Mm. So we choose uh, anyone uh, that in our gender and we need to um, bring up the mind of compassion uh, for that person and we also need to reflect uh, or contemplate uh, on uh, how the suffering affects to uh, that person. Uh, so with that kind of compassion, we would recognize uh, 
uh, how much suffering that they have gone through. And with that type of understanding, we need to um, uh, develop um, the thought of um, um, thinking that may this good person be released uh, from suffering. And so we uh, spread that kind of compassion toward the one that has that type of um, suffering. Uh, and uh, here, um, uh, we may uh, focus on my uh, to um, bring for that compassionate thought to recognize the suffering uh, that's happening to that person um, uh, to uh, um, uh, spread our uh, compassion toward that person uh, and to um, uh, take the necessary step uh, to help them and uh, uh, how we break down the barriers uh, between uh, us and others uh, when we consider about three types of people the first one is the person we respect again like our parents our elders and our teachers uh, and indifference person that means uh, the stranger the one that we don't know we have that type of indifference attitudes uh, toward them and the last one is um, the one that we don't like the one that we have a more city, and that's mean the one that mm, have um, some kind of conflict uh, with us. But still, uh, we have the thought that may this good person uh, be released from sufferings. So usually, it's much easier for us to develop uh, the compassion toward our loved ones, our parents, our spouse, our siblings our close friends and of course uh, it's not easy to spread our compassion to the stranger the one that we don't know at all the one that um, don't speak our language the one that don't come from uh, 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 the one that um, uh, follow different traditions uh, different culture and so forth we're not talking about the one that we consider as enemies, uh, the one that we hate, the one that we have so much anger. But no matter who they are, the Buddha reminds us that we need to uh, develop the compassionate thought toward anyone else, whether it's we love them, or whether we don't know them, or whether we have some kind of um, hatred toward them. Uh, and so we have to wish that May this good person be released from suffering. And again, uh, like in the uh, loving kindness sessions, uh, the Buddha teaches us that these are five um, in uh, categories of people. That means we spread that compassion to what all beings, uh, whether they are visible. Uh, invisible and this next one is the all bitter just mean the one has the breath the one to survive we spread that compassion toward them all creatures whether they are on the air um, on earth uh, under the earth under the ocean uh, regardless of um, who they are regardless of uh, uh, means they are, we spread our compassion toward them, um, all people, regardless of the genders, uh, race, nationalities, age, and so forth. We spread that compassion toward um, all of them, um, all uh, processes, individuality, that means uh, whoever has. In the physical body, or whichever is, has um, in the physical forms of life, we spread that compassion toward them, whether they are flies, the bugs, the insect, uh, uh, and so forth. We spread our compassion toward them all. 
And here are the seven uh, specified categories of people that we spread our compassion towards all women, all men, all noble ones, and all who are not nobles. Uh, all devas, as mean all celestial beings, all human beings, as mean we on earth, all in the lower realms of existence, uh, like the animals that we can see, uh, and in depth um, with them directly, um, or even some kind of wolves, hungry wolves, or the hell beings, uh, we spread that kind of compassion uh, toward all of them. Uh, and here, yeah, we have uh, uh, the uh, training uh, that the Buddha provides for us, that we need to have that um, thinking uh, toward the five unspecified categories. We say that um, um, may all beings be released from sufferings, um, may all uh, breathers be released from suffering, may all creatures be released from suffering, may all people be released from suffering, may all processing individuality be released from suffering. Mm, that is what we spread our compassion to these five and satisfy categories. And again, we spread our compassion toward seven specified categories. And we may say too, uh, may all women be released from suffering, may all men be released from suffering, may all noble ones be released from suffering, uh, may all uh, who are not nobles be released uh, from suffering, uh, may all devas be released from suffering, uh, may all human beings uh, be released from suffering, and may all in low realms of assistance be released from suffering. So we spread our compassion toward these seven specified categories, the um, lessons of who they are, whether they are women, uh, men, whether they are noble, uh, not noble, uh, whether they are human or devas, which means celestial beings, or uh, whether they were born in the lower realms of existence, like the hell, animals, and hungry boys. We spread that um, compassion toward, toward them. And the next one, um, we spread uh, that type of compassion uh, toward those um, types of beings uh, in 10 directions. Uh, we have uh, north, south, east, west, uh, southwest, um, north, east, north, west, um, uh, and up and down. So in total, we have 10 directions. And in Buddhist view, uh, sentient beings live everywhere. Uh, if we look at the universe uh, above, below us, uh, the west and the east, the north, the south, south east, south west, the east, northwest, and so forth. All kind of beings uh, exist surrounding us. That's why uh, the Buddha asked us uh, to uh, develop that kind of compassion, regardless of who they are, regardless of where they live. So it's so important that we need to uh, spread that compassion. And again, the last time uh, we uh, studied that this uh, 11 um, benefit of developing the loving kindness and compassion. Uh, so it's so important that we know as long as we harbor the ill will, the hatred, uh, and animosity toward other beings. Uh, we are the one who suffer the first, physically and mentally. Physically, it's easy for us to get sick. Uh, let's say when we have anger towards someone else, uh, we may harm our uh, internal organs. And of course, we would not have any peace when we have that type of anger and animosity toward other people. Mm. 
Yeah, but uh, on the other hand, if we have loving kindness and compassion, uh, physically, uh, we would um, uh, have healthy body and our mind is more peaceful. That's why here, uh, the Buddha say that um, well, when we have loving kindness and compassion, we sleep in comfort. Uh, when we sleep in, we feel more comfortable because nothing that disturbs our mentality and our body feel more healthy. And uh, when we wake up, we feel more comfortable too because we don't have uh, that type of um, anger, that type of hatred uh, within our mind. And because we don't uh, have any kind of uh, negative thoughts. So in the dreams, we would not have any kind of um, uh, nightmare. And of course, um, when we more compassionate, uh, when we have loving kindness towards other people, um, other people would recognize our facial expression, um, our vocal expression, um, our body action uh, in the compassionate way, in the understandable way, in the uh, 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 friendly way. So that's why they like to see, interact, and um, uh, talk with us. And so that's why uh, not only human beings, but um, the non-human beings, the invisible beings in Buddhist view, like uh, the ghosts or even celestial beings, uh, they are delightful um, to support us, uh, to uh, protect us. Uh, that's number six, the devil, uh, celestial beings, girls, the fire, poison, the weapons would not affect us. The fire, the poison, the weapons uh, represent our anger, our um, hatred, and our negative thoughts towards other people. If we could transform those thoughts into compassion, one, it would not affect uh, our mind at all. I mean, that the negative thought uh, would not mm, affect our mind. And our mind will be easily uh, concentrated where we don't have any kind of hatred towards other people, where we don't do any kind of conflict with other people in a negative way. It's easy for us to focus. But if we um, maintain or keep the growth of uh, anger, it's not easy for us to concentrate our mind. And of course, our um, complexion to be bright. And when we uh, pass away, it would be more peaceful. Um, and like the Buddha say here, we may be born in the, uh, the heaven. So, uh, of course, uh, of these things uh, that the Buddha explained in his um, second vision, that will be your division of um, our human beings, but at least when we have that type of loving kindness and compassion, uh, we uh, have the peaceful uh, and happy life. Uh, we would mm, uh, interact with other people mm, in a calm way. And of course, in the turn, uh, they would mm, like to interact with us. Uh, in that way, in that behavior. Uh, it's common sense because uh, no one uh, want to raise a conflict. Uh, no one want uh, to um, have enemies. Uh, but um, if we don't know, we may create the conflicts and enemies easily. Uh, so when they develop the compassion, uh, we can transform the enemy into friends. Uh, and so forth. So those are the benefits of having loving kindness and compassion. Uh, and of course, um, these are the universal value for most of the religious traditions nowadays. Uh, again, uh, as uh, human, uh, we need uh, love from our parents, our spouse, our parents, and whoever we encounter with. And so do they 
you know, they need love, they need care, they need compassion. That's why this kind of love, care, compassion, uh, and loving kindness bond us together uh, as uh, human beings in this uh, planet. Uh, without care, love, and compassion, there's no way for us to work together. Uh, there's no way for us to support each other, uh, even in the families, uh, communities, or society. So this is so essential uh, for our survival on this uh, earth. So that's why, as Buddhists, uh, the Buddha demands that we need to uh, develop this type of loving kindness and compassion with our people uh, mentally, but uh, in action, we need to step out uh, to help those uh, in need, uh, those suffer all kind of sufferings. Uh, that's we call for the action. Uh, of course, uh, if we are not ready to have this type of loving kindness and compassion, uh, that need to be developed in our mind. So when we see other people suffering, it's not easy for us to step out, help those uh, in need help, or those uh, suffer or have suffered. And so that's why in uh, life we need to uh, take action when we see uh, people and sufferings. And of course, um, uh, we don't need to wait until uh, there's some kind of nature disaster happening. Uh, Any times in our daily lives, we can step out and help uh, people on the street, people at work and so forth. Uh, so um, let's watch some video clips about um, some people who step out uh, to help other victims uh, during the um, Harvey hurricanes, has happened the last uh, few years in Houston area. You know, water comes in, it changes everything. It just kept dumping rain for hours and for days. It was heart wrenching. It rose overnight very quickly. <laughs> it's pretty mind boggling in, in more ways than one. Uh, it was a pretty emotional moment, to say the least. People are worried about their families and their loved ones, and so I started thinking about how can I help with this? Yeah, emergency management is calling on owners of any kind of watercraft in greater Houston to assist in the rescue of those trapped in flooded areas. When we woke up that morning, we discovered that we are an island. All the major highways, all the major roadways were underwater. The only way we could talk to each other was mainly through social media. And so we created a Facebook group called the Fairfield Relief Efforts. My brother actually called something on Facebook saying that we need all the help we can get. Any flat bottom boat or, or shallow water boat that, that can come assist. We just kind of looked at each other and for the rest of this history, we got home and loaded up the boat and headed up that way. There was a line of people just wanting to give to either go to rescues or donate anything to help the others. It was so overwhelming the amount of people wanted to support us. We had well over 200 plus volunteers and we rescued over 125 people. We got in touch with Delmar and you know we asked him, is there anything we can do? Do you need help or anything like that? And we took him back to his house and he was able to save a few things. Austin came up here and helped me pick everything up. They are examples to everybody in this county. They take helping people to a new level. Our son's kindergarten teacher, she posted online that her in-laws needed to be rescued, that their neighborhood was flooding really fast and they needed somebody to come down and get them. Krishna right away messaged me and then they went and rescued my in-laws. My particular vehicle has a snow on it, so it's able to go into waters a little deeper than normal. There are road closures everywhere, and their neighborhood was completely underwater. To get from point A to point B, we're navigating around people in canoes and boats. When we finally got the family back here to dry ground, if you will, it was her, and she says, thank you, how can we repay you? It's like, this you all my kid out of reach. It's fine. We're good. 
Houston is such an incredibly large city with so many people from various backgrounds, but it didn't matter. People came together to help each other. I was in constant awe of my neighbors, of my entire community of Central South. When people are in need, it's just that instinct that kicks in. I was just one small part of the community. Everybody pitched in. I mean, it was a group effort. I've grown up in Texas, so I know what people are like here. They're pretty awesome. We're pretty good at taking care of each other. So you see here, uh, so when uh, how we came, so many people stepped out to help each other. Uh, in the normal days, we uh, follow uh, our uh, daily life function uh, to take care of ourselves and our families. But in crisis times, uh, so many people, they are so compassionate, and they are so kind to step out help each other uh, without any kind of um, need to recognize. Uh, so that's the kindness and compassion that everyone was um, have. Uh, so this universal values, of course, uh, from time to time, we still need to encourage other people to do so, but um, uh, it's still in nature uh, that everyone of us has. And uh, recently, let me show to you the next one is last year, there's some hurricane um, appeared to uh, uh, Vietnam and um, uh, there's some Buddhist uh, delegation uh, in relief uh, groups that went to the poor area. Uh, to help those victims that were affected by the hurricanes. Yeah. And, uh, they pass out the money, to pass out the books uh, for the children. Uh, they pass out the foods, um, the necessary, they uh, even offer the money uh, to the poor people, uh, to the sick people and so forth. So there is the Buddhist um, charitable works uh, so that's um, that we have to take an action we have to step out uh, to help those people that really need um, especially uh, when nature disaster uh, strike um, people mm. Okay, so um, this is the video clip that show how uh, Buddhist delegation went to that area to uh, do the um, charitable works uh, to help poor people or victims um, that affected by the hurricanes. Um, and so again, uh, with this in mind, uh, the Buddha. Uh, always uh, requires that uh, we need to develop that type of loving kindness and compassion. And when things happen, uh, we easily uh, to step out and help those people. And if we're not ready, mindfully and mentally, uh, when we see other people suffer, we would not need to care much about them because most of the time, um, uh, we are attached to our own uh, families, um, our own lives. We may not care much about others, but um, uh, the Buddha reminds us that uh, life is uh, like the web of lives, that whichever thing we do, we are to other people, uh, and vice versa. And we depend on each other. That's what we call interdependence. Uh, the teacher depends upon the student uh, to come to class to teach, and the student depends upon the teacher to explain uh, the lesson, and the doctor depends upon the uh, patient. Uh, if there's no patient, uh, so there's no need uh, to have a doctor. And uh, of course, the patients uh, depend upon the treatments 
of the doctors. Uh, and even the doctor need uh, to depend upon the one who produce the cars, um, the food, and so forth. So in a society, everyone take the, uh, their own roles, uh, but uh, uh, we support each other, and we depend upon each other. So uh, we cannot live in isolations. That's why when we uh, share and spread the compassion uh, by action, uh, so we will affect to other people positively. Mm, of course, uh, if we have hatred, uh, mm, uh, anger, uh, and so forth, it will bring the disaster uh, toward ourselves and others. And so that's why uh, developing the loving kindness and compassion is so important when our mind will be more healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. Um, and then so it will affect uh, to other people surrounding us uh, near and far. And this type of um, uh, domino effect we can recognize uh, in our daily lives. So one person help out the person, that other person would help other and so forth. And it create the domino effect, it create the ripple effect of having the care, uh, loving kindness and compassion toward um, everyone else. So that's why we can bring uh, peace uh, and happiness uh, within our society and communities. Uh, so let me uh, show you um, the next. Uh, video clips uh, that relate to what I say, uh, the domino effect, ripple effect of uh, the kindness and compassion that we put in action. And actually, uh, last uh, session, uh, we uh, stopped uh, uh, at the first uh, portion of this video clip. <laughs> Sometimes I let a third the moon. I think I'm, I'm breathing. And I pray, don't take me soon. Cause I am here for breathing. Sometimes in my tears I drown. But I never let it get me down. So when negativity surrounds, I know something that you know surrounding us. My life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say that we know what I want. Pick up uh, something that uh, that gentleman dropped down on the floor, accidentally of his wallet. And uh, this young man, uh, he had uh, another man to carry the Lord's logos from this car to the house. And this young man, he uh, step up uh, to buy hot dogs. 
and he bought two of them. And he stepped up uh, to give uh, this hot dog to a homeless guy. And uh, the one that saw the hot dog uh, gave him the water bottles to give to that uh, homeless guy too. And uh, this homeless guy saw a young lady who forgot her own cell phone. This young lady uh, offered the crowd uh, to a lady who is uh, uh, sadly. And she got, the young lady got the clothes from uh, the one that uh, uh, saw that. Uh, Sell the the flowers. And the lady who came from the restaurant uh, put a big tip uh, for the waitress. And the waitress uh, gave the waters uh, to the man that uh, had a young boy uh, that he fell down on the street. Anyway, so again, of course, um, uh, this is the act of the sins that people uh, act out, but still, it does demonstrate that um, one of our little act of compassion uh, and care would have a ripple effect to other people. Uh, so we need to. Uh, Mm, pay attention on them. Uh, mm, mm, we should not uh, mm, despise uh, or look up on them, even it's just a small act of compassion and care. That's why the Buddha say that um, uh, you need to be careful uh, that um, even a small act of mm, care and help uh, is like a drop of water uh, in the um, uh, uh, bottles. Uh, eventually, uh, it will fill up with bottles. And so each act of um, kindness, uh, compassion, and care, uh, eventually it will be accumulated uh, and will affect to ourselves and others. So that's why in Buddhism, uh, loving kindness is so important for us to recognize so that we can uh, uh, implement this kind of uh, what we call initiation, uh, the uh, sublime state of the mind. Loving kindness and compassion are considered as the sublime states of our mind. And that's a lofty mind. Uh, that um, the universal values that uh, every of us has, uh, and even even uh, the animals like the dog, um, the cat, uh, or the hen, uh, they, they still love uh, their owners, and uh, they still love their own um, offspring. So that's why it's not only human beings, but also. Uh, and essential beings um, have this kind of uh, loving kindness and compassion. That's why the Buddha said they are uh, the uh, um, mm, sublime state of our mind. And uh, no matter who uh, we are, uh, we need to develop that type of mm, sublime state. And no matter who other people are, 
regardless of gender, uh, age, uh, um, nationality, and so forth. Uh, wherever uh, they are, wherever they live, we need to spread that compassion toward all the people. Okay, so the next uh, items, the next uh, Supreme State uh, that I want to discuss in this session is what we call uh, the um, uh, mudita or uh, empathetic uh, choice or uh, what we call the um, uh, appreciative joy. And that's mean when we see our people uh, as successful, um, we would have the joy for them. Uh, like uh, this baby has the first experience of the bubbles. Uh, he feel the joy there. Mm. So uh, in workplace, for example, if our friends, our co-workers you know, have the uh, uh, raise in their salaries and their position, uh, can we develop that kind of um, uh, appreciative choice or not? Uh, of course, um, if they are our close friends, it's much easier for us to rejoice of their success. But if they are stranger, or if they are our enemies, it's not easy for us to develop that type of joy. And that's why here, uh, the, the um, emphasis on the importance of um, developing this kind of um, uh, appreciative choice or the joy in our success. So here, the definition is that uh, appreciative choice is the wholesome attitude of rejoicing the happiness and virtues of all gentle beings. Uh, it counters the jealousy and make people less self-centered. It's so clear that uh, most of us, we have some kind of problems uh, of jealousy. That's when we are jealous uh, toward other people's success whether they hire position in uh, a companies or whether they are more uh, wealthy, uh, uh, strong and so forth. It is not easy for us to rejoice in their success, but here uh, the Buddha indicate that um, uh, we can uh, transform uh, that type of jealousy. Uh, so, um, uh, let me uh, go back uh, to the video clips I want to share with you that uh, we need to recognize the uh, dangers of having jealous mind. Is that not in your stomach? That mix of fear and anxiety that materializes when you feel threatened by someone prettier than you, smarter than you, it can cause you to do some pretty stupid sitcom level stuff just to regain control. Things that usually hurt other people, too. You're probably familiar with this feeling. It's what Shakespeare called the green-eyed monster. Today, we're talking about jealousy. Here's the thing, kids. Jealousy is a distinctly first-person emotion. It almost always comes from a place of insecurity, which you ultimately project on others. The bottom line, jealousy isn't about the other person. It's about you. Today on Wellcast, we're going to help you work through these insecurities so that your friends and your loved ones don't get caught in the crossfire. We'll give you three coping mechanisms to help you keep that jealousy from taking complete control of your life, ruining your relationships, and making you look totally stupid. I know you felt that vice-like grip of the green-eyed monster because you're not alone. It happens to everyone. Studies show that children as young as six months grimace when their mothers interact with a dummy baby. It's pretty much the occupational hazard of belonging to the human race. We want to be loved, and we do not want to be ignored. Unfortunately, long after we've outgrown our diapers, we still become a little childlike when we're jealous. Jealousy tends to come with a specific set of blinders, and the more jealous we are, the less able we are to, let's say, empathize with others. For example, a study conducted by the researchers at the University of Delaware found that jealous people were more easily distracted <laughs> and less able to perform simple memory games. So 
let's try to figure out how to get your jealousy issues under control. Take out your Wilcast journal. We've got a three-step system for this, and it's simple. Acknowledge, communicate, and resolve. So the next time you're in a situation where you're experiencing those extreme jealous thoughts, go into a separate room, take out your Wilcast journal, and calm down. Step one, acknowledge. Admit it. You're jealous, and you can't run from your feelings. But by addressing your jealousy head on, you can keep it from taking on epic, unrealistic proportions. Write down exactly what's making you jealous and why. Let's say you just found out that your two best friends didn't invite you to that movie that they caught last week. Get it out. My friends are hanging out without me. I'm scared they'll stop being my friend. It's okay to be a little dramatic. It's just your journal. Step two, communicate. Now that all of your embarrassing thoughts are out on paper, go get the real story. Don't have an imaginary argument with your friends in your head. It's only gonna make things worse. Tell them how you feel about what happened. Be vulnerable and apologize to them if you overreacted in any way, because you might have. Make it clear that you're expressing your feelings and not stating facts. Speak in I statements. I feel like you didn't want to hang out with me because you're tired of me. That's your insecurity. At a certain point, the only way to get over your jealousy is to stop thinking about yourself all the time and see someone else's point of view. Step three, resolve. And this will be the hardest part for you because now you have to listen. Your friends might tell you that you're overreacting and they might be right. We know you don't like horror movies, so we didn't think to invite you. Let's recap. That big, bad, green-eyed monster gets all of us sometimes. But today, we learned three ways to keep it at bay. By acknowledging your own insecurities, communicating with others, and ultimately, listening. Okay, so here is the way that uh, this uh, video clips uh, share to us how to deal with uh, the uh, jealousy. The first one is to admit that we have that type of um, jealousy. And the second one is to communicate uh, with that uh, person or that group of people that uh, we have jealousy toward them. And the last one, we resolve the problems. So uh, this lady mentioned this, the second step, uh, the communication that we need to uh, recognize uh, due to our selfishness, uh, due to our attachment to ego. That's why we don't want anyone to be higher than us. We don't want um, other people uh, are more successful than us and so forth. That's because of attachment to ego. Uh, but if we uh, put our foot in their shoe, if we understand the situation with a compassionate mind, uh, we would uh, easily uh, to um, uh, communicate uh, it up with other people uh, and of course to uh, reduce the degree of um, jealousy and the last one to dissolve that means we uh, can uh, open our mind uh, to talk with them uh, to engage in the conversation and in action with them so eventually uh, we would um, deduce uh, that type of negative state of mind. Right? So in Buddhist view, again, uh, um, uh, the Buddha reminds us that um, because of that type of uh, attachment to the cell, uh, uh, cell center, that's why we always like uh, to be successful and uh, we always like to uh, stand above orders. Uh, we don't want to uh, uh, be less successful than others. Uh, so that's why it's easy for us to have that jealous mind. So um, uh, in uh, uh, this um, uh, session, uh, again, we learned that um, uh, people uh, can develop this type of appreciative joy or the joy in other people's success. Mm, it's like the mother uh, have the joy on her son or children's success and happiness in life. 
And so in the same way, uh, we uh, can have that kind of feeling uh, and attitude toward, especially our close one, our loved one, uh, about their fortune uh, and success. Uh, but of course, it's not easy when it deal with um, uh, the one that we don't like. Uh, we mm, most of the time like them to be failure. Uh, most of the time we want uh, to control them. We want mm, uh, to stand above them and so forth. So that's why it creates um, the compass uh, when we have to have attitude. And that's why here uh, the Buddha's um, praise if uh, whoever can apply this type of um, uh, uh, attitude uh, uh, or the sublime state of mind or the appreciative choice uh, it would be more helpful for us in our daily life when we deal with uh, other people uh, so um, here uh, the Buddha um, provided steps for us uh, to uh, develop this type of um, appreciative choice or the join uh, the success of other people. So at first, uh, we choose a living beings of our own gender. So at the sight of um, uh, them, make us happy, and we want to develop um, the friendship with them. And from that time on, we want to develop the love and kindness uh, and compassion uh, toward that person and with that uh, appreciation choice uh, toward that person uh, we have the thought that may this person uh, not be separated from prosperity he has attained it. Mm, so this is the uh, um, contemplations that we need to develop um, and change our mind in that um, way uh, so that when we actually uh, meet the person and when we um, witness that person's success, uh, we would mm, maintain that kind of um, positive attitude uh, toward that person. We would maintain the appreciative choice toward that person. And here yeah, it would help for if we develop this kind of um, Discipline say it would um, help us to attend from the first to the second uh, uh, and to the third jhana. Jhana does mean the multitude, taste you, stay of um, mind. Mm. And here, uh, uh, to break down the barriers uh, between us and others, uh, like um, the way that uh, the Buddha taught us how to develop the loving kindness, compassion. Uh, here, uh, we develop our appreciative choice toward our people um, in the way that we break out uh, the uh, boundaries uh, between ourselves and others. Uh, we need to spread that kind of um, appreciative joy toward the one that we respect, uh, the one that uh, we don't know, a second person, a stranger. And the last one, the one that uh, we don't like. And so this is uh, the same training that we need to uh, train our mind. Uh, so let me stop here since time is up. So next time we can discuss further about this. Uh, Namo Shakyamuni Buddha.